Hello! Welcome back to the final video on the building of the 13,200 piece Disney Orchestra. Now the reason I say specifically on the building of is because this is the last section of the puzzle. Uh, it's true and after I have completed this section I will have completed the entire puzzle. I can't quite believe it. You might hear me say I can't believe it quite a lot in this video. <laughs> uh, I just can't believe I'm at this stage. But anyway, um, the reason I said specifically on the building of this puzzle is because I actually have two more bonus videos planned for this particular um, series of videos. Uh, so it's not quite the end, which I'm glad about because I just would happily let this go on forever. I've just enjoyed it so, so, so much. As you can tell, I'm kind of bobbing in my chair. Anyway, <laughs> um, welcome back to this video on the final section of this amazing uh, large <laughs> Clementoni Disney Orchestra puzzle. Um, I have one section remaining and that is section F. It is the bottom right hand corner. You can see here, it has the orchestra. It's another orchestra section. I'm very glad I finished with an orchestra section of this puzzle because uh, finishing on one of the curtain sections <laughs> would have been a bit of a downer for me because <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, it takes quite a long time to do the curtains, but I think I talked about that enough in the last video on this. But anyway, it's an orchestra section and the characters we have in this particular section are Clarabelle, uh, who is playing a harp. Um, we also have um, Goofy, who's playing a double bass. Now, unfortunately, you don't have the heads of these characters in this section because they're in the section above. Uh, but you've got the bodies and you've got the instruments. Um, you do have the entirety of Pluto, who's going at it on those two drums and looks as though he's really enjoying himself. Bless him. Um, you also have this tiny character who looks like Mickey, Mickey Mouse. I'm assuming his name isn't Mini Mickey, uh, but um, but you have him and you have... I actually thought there would be some little furry animals or birds or something flying around because on the rest of the orchestra section of the puzzle, there's squirrels and tortoises and weasels and all sorts of things. So um, I thought we would have that here as well, but we don't. We have instead a pair of drumsticks and a um, sheet of music. Um, we've got the stage lights again as well. And oh, that, apart from the characters and the instruments, that's pretty much it. So no little furry animals this time, unfortunately, but I'm really looking forward to getting started on this. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what's, what piles I'm going to sort them into in the intro. I kind of feel like I change my mind a lot when it comes to the sorting. I sort of have a plan and then I change my mind or I, I find that there's maybe another category of pieces that I can sort into that I hadn't thought of. Um, I, I just feel that w once I start looking at the actual pieces, then, you know, it kind of flows from there. But I will tell you that I am going to do another detailed sort. I think that that is definitely the way forward with this puzzle. I've done that in the last two sections. So I will be doing that again with this section as well. So I'm hoping for a good time on it, whether I will beat my fastest time uh, of 17 hours. Uh, we have yet to determine, but um, hopeful that I will. Uh, that was on section D in the bottom left corner. So it's kind of the opposite side to this section. So very possibly, very possibly, it might, I might equal it or be better it. Uh, we shall see. But I'm going to sort the pieces now. And uh, well, I've got to open the bag first, <laughs> which I have sitting here. Bag F for finish. <laughs> maybe. Um, and I have my lovely box lid that I'm going to uh, pour the pieces into. I, uh, the last time I'm going to open one of these bags. Um, and once I have had a good look at the pieces, I can sort of start to come up with a bit of a plan and um, just get started on sorting the pieces. I'll go over all the sorted piles after I've sorted them and I'll let you know what I've decided on that. But uh, yeah, without further ado, 
Um, I shall crack on with the puzzle. Please enjoy. Okay, time to open the bag. For the last time on this puzzle. Right, time to pull the pieces out for the last time on this puzzle. Time to do this for the last time on this puzzle. Are you getting fed up with me saying that yet? I'm getting fed up with myself. <laughs> so you probably, you probably will be. Ah, oh, oh, I've got three together there. Never mind, kind of used to that by now. Oh, come on. Oh, I can't rip that one off. I don't want to damage the pieces. I'll leave that one together. If I find that I have pieces together and I struggle to take them apart without damaging them, then I'll just leave them. I just don't think it's worth damaging the puzzle for. But uh, here they all are, raining down. Right, okay, so. Not telling a great deal from this, but there's quite a few yellows. I think they might be Pluto. Uh, he's quite a big sort of yellow character right in the middle of the picture. So thinking yellow pieces. Now I would need to be careful not to mix those up with pieces like this with yellow and kind of black on. I think they belong to the stage lights. There's also a big pair of symbols that the small Mickey character's playing. Um, so I'll need to make sure I don't get those mixed up with Pluto and all the stage lights. Um, so yeah, so there's yellows. I have... Um, Harp pieces that are jumping out at me. There's quite a lot of pinks because Clarabelle's wearing a pink dress, just like the other girls are as well. A um, few orangey colours. I think they might be from uh, Goofy's Double Base. So, yeah, so just looking at these, I'm starting to compile an idea of different... Um, different categories that I can sort them into. So I'll get on with that right now. But uh, yeah, the last time I'm going to see a pile of pieces like this for this puzzle. You're going to get put together now <laughs> and put with the rest of the sections. So let's get on with the sorting. Here they all are, all of the sorted piles. Now, this was a marathon sort. I just was working it out. It took me an hour and, I don't know, 24 minutes or something, which seems like a ridiculously long time. But I actually, again, really struggled with this one. In fact, this is probably the section I struggled most with in terms of sorting. There were just so many pieces where I didn't know what on earth they were what to sort it into, and some uh, where I realised kind of halfway through sorting that I was mistaken in what I thought they were. And so a lot of these piles are a little bit, um, shall we say, miscellaneous. So anyway, I'll start with the obvious ones. Edges, they, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, these ones, I sort of jumped a bit when I saw these because this is the only section I've seen with the kind of the trademark writing on it but uh, it's perhaps unfortunate that the first one I picked up was that one 
<laughs> which I think is part of the word poo from Winnie the Pooh. Uh, but there we go. Never mind. Um, so again, they're obvious ones with little bits of writing on. There's an edge in there, but I'll probably just do these at the same time as I do the edge. Um, pink pieces. Clarabelle's dress. They were super obvious. I was absolutely fine with those. There were some um, bits with green in, quite bright green. And I threw them in there because I'd found a piece with um, green and pink in it. So I figured that the green must go somewhere near Clarabelle. I'll check on the poster on that. Uh, in fact, Yes, they're both bits of green on near Clarabel, but I'd completely forgotten that uh, Pluto's wearing a green collar. And, but at, also, Clarabel is wearing a green bracelet. So, yeah, I feel fine having put them in there. I don't feel particularly bad that I haven't put them in the Pluto pile. They're still very close to Clarabel. So anyway, there's some green bits in there. I'll just move this out of the way. Uh, that's the pink pile. This is the uh, stage floor pile. So um, any kind of brownie, sort of chocolatey, caramelly kind of colours. Um, also blacks. Um, black pieces are in there as well. Um, there's one or two pieces in here where there's a little bit of detail on. I, th I think might be stools, the little wooden stools that the orchestra is sitting on. Um, I didn't give them a separate pile. Um, I just threw them in there because there weren't really enough of them. So, yeah, that was a fairly obvious one. These are pieces of the harp, uh, I think. Well, the, it, the ones with the strings on are very obviously the harp. There's a few kind of pieces where there's like wood um, and it looks like it might be the harp so there's a little bit of uncertainty there but mostly I think that one's fine. That is the tiny little curtain pile. Um, there's a very very small bit of curtain on this section so that is that. This pile here of yellow pieces is either stage lights uh, well, it's stage lights and it's the symbols that uh, Minnie Mickey is playing. I didn't separate those because it was too difficult to tell them apart. But again, the pile's small enough for that not really to be an issue. This is Pluto. A different shade of yellow to the stage lights. A bit sort of brighter, the yellows in there. I may have mixed up a few, but uh, I would say largely that is... Pluto. This one, I like this pile, nice and small, um, is the musical notes pieces. If you can see there, the very faint staves and some actual musical notes there on that one and that one. Uh, so they're um, separated as well. I will probably do that at the same time as I do the edge as well, because it's kind of a tiny pile. That is a pile of pieces that are the double bass. Um, Goofy's double bass that he is playing. They were pretty obvious, they kind of stood out. Um, this is pieces where there was obvious kind of dark blue on them. So I think belong to possibly Goofy's arms and also the suit that the mini Mickey character is wearing. So that's those. This is pieces with um, metal bits from the drum. So now the drum, that Goofy is playing, again, I'll grab this for a second, has lots of shiny silver metal all around it and on the base of it. And I sort of recognise those because they're very similar to the metal on Pete's drum, which you can actually see a little tiny bit of. Uh, the right hand side of it there. So um, I separated those because I just I just recognised them uh, from having done a drum in the in one of the previous sections. The only thing about the drum is not only is there all this metal, but there's all this kind of orange and this sort of whitish yellow. Now they, I think, are in here. <laughs> this was supposed to be. This is one of the miscellaneous piles. It was supposed to be bits that I thought were the stage. Now, there are undoubtedly some stage pieces in here, but in actual fact, you don't see very much of the stage. 
because it's covered up by Goofy and Clarabelle's heart. There's a little bit there, but it's very dark. Um, and some of those pieces might even have ended up in the floor pile. So I don't think there are many stage pieces in here. I think these pieces belong to the orange bit of Goofy's drum. Um, so that's that's that pile there. Uh, I'm trying. There's so many piles of pieces here. I'm trying to think which ones have still got to show you. I think the last one is this one. Now this was the pile that I did not like. <laughs> this is the most miscellaneous pile of pieces. Initially, it was supposed to be a kind of a pile of pieces where I just didn't recognise them, but um, tended to have kind of white and yellow on. Now, having looked at the poster again, I think these pieces actually now, in hindsight, belong to Goofy's drum. But I happened, <laughs> I kept changing my mind as to what this pile was, and I was throwing, for a while, I was throwing bits that looked flesh-coloured, that were obviously part of Minnie Mickey's face, and I was throwing black pieces in there that I could tell were part of Minnie Mickey's ears. So there's a lot of Minnie Mickey in here. There's also, I think, some gloves uh, in here as well and some eyes. Uh, there's a lot of white in here. Um, but I was throwing these bits where there was little bits of white on uh, that I didn't know where they went and only realised really towards the end that they actually probably belong to Goofy's drum. So this pile is a bit of a mishmash and I think I'm going to have to resort it, but I'm not going to do that yet um, because I'm not going to actually do this pile of pieces yet. Uh, I'll be starting as usual with the edges and I'll put together these uh, little bits with writing on at the same time and I'm going to at the same time put together these uh, musical note pieces as well and then after that haven't yet decided probably will be Clarabelle's dress I think after that um and I'll just decide from there but yeah thank goodness sorting finished <laughs> finished almost <laughs> so that bit was pretty easy to put in the writing uh, and just pop that in once I'd finished the edge um, I actually when I did this had two pieces uh, that I was missing but now it's just one that piece there which obviously goes on somewhere around here because you've got kind of the dark red against the sort of the, the brownie colour. Um, there must be a piece in between these two because that does not fit in there. So there's either one piece or possibly two, but uh, there was another one around here somewhere, one of these kind of middle ones um, that was missing as well, but just I just had a very quick shuffle through the floor stage floor pieces and I just happened to spot it so I did find that one the other one is probably in the same pile although it might be in one of the other ones I'm not at all surprised that that has happened this time the miss sorting because this one took me a very long time to sort and yet I was that busy concentrating on what was on the picture on the piece that I think sometimes I lost sight of what the shapes were and I kind of just maybe just threw in the wrong pile. So I'm sure that will turn up. Um, but I've put the writing in and I have also popped together these musical note pieces. Um, I've got one missing there. I think that's probably in the pile of white bits. There are parts of this where the, the musical notes had really faded, so I probably just didn't even spot it. That, I think, goes at the edge somewhere, but I've obviously missed that like the ones that go beside it. So I will fill that in as and when I find those pieces as well. This just took me 29 minutes. So that's not bad. The last edge took me 33 minutes. And this included 
extra bits as well. So it was 29 minutes to do the edge, the little bits of writing and those musical notes. So not bad at all. Finding this section to be quite different from the section on the opposite side to this with the little uh, ducks and with Daisy and Scrooge, I feel like there was more on that section and the characters were sort of smaller. So the three ducks were a bit smaller and um, Chip and Dale and all the kind of little creatures, whereas the double bass on here is really big. It kind of dominates the picture. Same with Clarabelle and a harp. Um, you can just see a little bit of Pluto there having been started. Oh, look what I've found. Um, you can just see a little bit there of Pluto having been started. Um, and he's pretty big as well. I mean, he's kind of bang in the middle with his drum. So, yeah, so it's a bit different with the characters just kind of being bigger and there being fewer of them. Um, so the individual sections are taking me slightly longer, but obviously more of the puzzle is done once they're finished. Okay, so I have now pretty much done the curtain and I managed to attach it to uh, the bottom section of Clarabelle there. So that's coming along nicely. I have also almost finished the two drums. I haven't done the tops yet and there's still a leg on that one that I haven't done. Um, but I am finding with this section of the puzzle that the sorting has been just a little bit flawed and because some of the pieces are just really similar colours, I have most of them right, but I'm finding pieces in other piles of um, pieces for different sections. So what I am going to do now is tackle. Uh, I don't know if you remember me saying I had kind of a miscellaneous pile of pieces um, that I'd done, which was this pile here, um, because I now know having done a whole bunch of the rest of the section, I now know that there are a lot of pieces in here that are missing pieces from these sections. So I'm gonna go through it 
and try and fill out those gaps and put together what I can of um, what I think might be small Mickey. Uh, I think there's quite a few of his pieces in here. This is kind of blue suit um, and things. So hopefully I will be able to fill out some of the area around the double base as well. Um, where Because you can still see Goofy's arm and hand uh, play in the double base. So I'm going now to tackle these and hopefully um, get those piles down just now. So here we go. Okay, so I've been having a small dilemma deciding what section to do next because aside from the floor uh, pieces, I really only have lots of yellow uh, pieces. Now, this was the pile that I sorted as Pluto, but I believe that there's quite a few pieces in here that possibly belong to uh, the symbol that this uh, small Mickey character is playing. So you can just see the top of it there. Well, he's got two actually. You can see a little bit of it there and a bit there. Um, he's also got a yellow crown. And you've got um, Pluto obviously there. So he takes up more or less that entire space. So he's quite big. Um, and again, I've started to put in some of the edge of him. So uh, now's the time when I'm going to have to start tackling these pieces. I've kind of put them off until this point. Um, but there's so many of them and I still don't know how mixed up they are. It's been a real kind of issue with this section of the puzzle, actually. So what I've decided to do is shape sort all of them. So they, they're the Pluto ones, as I said. These ones are the ones I shape sorted as being either the symbol or... The stage light, there's also the stage light, there's two actually um, stage lights. So um, I'm just going to sort them all. St I'll still keep them separate, but I'll sort them all. I've got my pieces of paper at the ready there. I'm going to shape sort and I'm going to try and make a start probably on the stage lights first. Some of the stage light pieces are obvious, like I'm 99% certain that that's the edge of a stage light because the floor is so dark around it. Um, and I'm going to try and get on with those because at this point, there's so many sections that have been done um, that I have little bits, little edges that I can actually start to work from and work kind of inwards. Uh, and the same with the symbol as well. I don't have that with the stage lights yet, but as I say, those ones tend to be a little bit more obvious. So that's my plan just now. And also, uh, good news took a while but I was having a rummage through the floor pieces and I found the missing edge piece. There was only one missing so that goes in there and then the other one that I had at the end pops in there and that is it done. So finally I have finished the edge <laughs> but uh, that's a relief, that's a relief. It wasn't lost, just missorted so Right, on with the yellow pieces.
so if I could just go through the pieces that I have left. This is a box of kind of leftover pieces from the other piles. So there's a few there that were e either in the yellow, um, like this, this symbol or stage light pile. One or two were in the uh, Pluto pile. Um, one of the stage lights isn't quite finished. So I think probably there'll be one or two of those going in there, but I can't fit them in at the minute. There's also a few really dark reds that I've picked out that I think go up here on that dark part of the stage that's kind of shadowed by the curtain. Uh, so I've put them to one side just to kind of tackle later on. Um, and there's some bits that were in the floor, um, the stage floor pile of pieces that I've sort of picked out that have kind of detailing on that I think might belong to uh, like this stool here that Pluto's sitting on. And also you can see a little bit of a stool there that um, Clarabelle's sitting on. So I've picked out kind of just ones with little details on like that. So I'm gonna leave those there to put in at some point. Now, these ones are all the stage four pieces that I sorted. I've put those in the biggest box so I can kind of spread them out and see what I'm looking at. Um, so the way I'm gonna tackle these is, um, there's kind of wild differences in the shades and the colours and things because different parts of the stage are lit. Um, so like the pieces at the back tend to be kind of nearer the top, tend to be more orangey in colour. I've actually done quite a lot there, but tend to be more orangey in colour. Then you've got another sort of bright section here right in front of the stage lights that are almost kind of beige, like a really light beige. Uh, and then they kind of morph into sort of a dark brown colour. Over here, you've still got quite a few sort of orangey bits. So anyway, th there's just kind of a lot of different shades of colour in this. So I think that's going to be my initial um, approach with this, to just start picking out different shades of colour. And I've actually started doing that here, picked out really orange pieces. Um, and I'm going to do those first. I think they'll be over here. So I'll be starting to fill this section in first and then I'll pick out the kind of the slightly darker shades and I'll just move across the puzzle um, doing it that way. So you've still got some kind of lighter, almost orange colors here and then it gets quite dark. And then again, you've got another stage light here so it gets sort of fairly bright and the colors are pretty distinct. Um, so I've actually managed to put a few in already. And then over here, you have like the darkest section. So it's really dark down here. Still a little bit of curtain left to do. Um, really dark here. We've still got some of Clarabelle. That's kind of black. So the blacks are mixed in there. There's also some really dark colors there where I've not quite finished Goofy and a little Mickey character. So yeah, so it's just kind of sorting pieces by shade and then eventually sorting by shape, which is what I've done with these here. Um, and yeah, just until until the thing is done. So it's coming along really, really well. So I shall get on with that just now. Okay, momentous moment coming up. Oh, I'm getting quite emotional. I am officially finishing the 13,200 piece Disney Orchestra by Clementoni. The last section 
final piece going in. I can't describe my excitement to you. Hi! Right, you'll notice I'm in a different place. I have come here to a community hall, which is not far from where I live, to lay out the puzzle and take lots of photographs of it because, unfortunately, my lounge is just not big enough anymore to fit this humongous uh, jigsaw into. So I have the completed thing here in my hand, as you can see. Um, it's getting quite heavy, actually. <laughs> my arms are starting to hurt. But yeah, I have it all here and I'm now going to um, lay it all out for you and I hope you enjoy. So here we are. I have finished it. I finished it. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe I finished it. I told you I'd say that a lot. <laughs> okay, so um, by way of a kind of an outro to this video, I thought what I would do is um, answer a whole bunch of questions that uh, different people have asked me uh, along the way. Um, because the questions that people have asked, um, pretty much kind of cover all the info that I can think of that you might want to know about the puzzle. Um, now there is quite a lot of info that I have to sort of, uh, fit into this. So if you see me looking down on occasion, it is because I've got my iPad in front of me. Um, and I, I can't remember everything I've written. So I'll just be looking down now and again uh, to give me um, a wee hint on which question's coming up next and, and that kind of thing. Because as I say, and there's some statistics as well and stuff that I just can't keep in my head anymore because my memory isn't what it used to be. But um, I'm going to start off by um, asking answering the first question, which is how big is this puzzle once it's finished? Okay, so according to the box, the puzzle is, uh, now this is one of those moments where I'm gonna have to look down. Uh, it is 292.5 centimeters wide by 135 centimeters tall. So it is a big puzzle. <laughs> uh, now then, that makes it four feet wider than I am tall and it makes me only 30 centimeters taller than it is tall. Um, so yeah, it's pretty darn huge. Now, 
Um, if you would like that in inches, apologies, I kind of work in centimetres, but uh, in inches, that is 115 and one sixth of an inch wide by 53 and one seventh of an inch tall. Um, that's exactly what it says on the box. So I don't know how important a sixth or a seventh of an inch is, um, but that's what it is in inches. If you prefer to use uh, inches as your measurement. Um, so I think a lot of the reason uh, people ask me what size it ends up being um, is because they're trying to figure out if they can do the puzzle. And this is another question that's been asked. How did I go about doing it uh, given its large size and potentially small space to do it in? Because, you know, not everybody lives in huge houses with huge rooms with space to have a massive puzzle out all day, every day. Um, it did. People just don't have that. So, and I don't have that. So um, this is basically uh, how I did it. So the, the puzzle comes in six bags. It comes in six separate bags of 2,204 pieces each. So the puzzle is actually 13,224 pieces in total. They don't put the 24 on the box, but they do tell you in the little booklet inside the box. So that basically means that if you choose to do it in the individual sections that it comes in, you are basing a much more manageable sized um, puzzle. Uh, so now I have just a simple rectangular white table from Ikea, and that is plenty big enough for one of the sections. Um, if you, if like me, you have to put your puzzle away at the end of every day because, you know, it takes up too much space and you can't have it out all the time, or perhaps you have children running around or cats or some potential disaster looming that, you know, could ruin a puzzle entirely, uh, which I also have, <laughs> um, uh, then, you know, you'll need to be putting your puzzle away each time, which if it's laid out on a table can be quite tricky. So there's a couple of different sort of homemade methods you can use to get around this. But uh, what I did was I had a board that I made myself. It was just a large bit of cardboard that I got from an old box um, that I think we got like a flat pack wardrobe in. So it was a large piece of card and I wrapped around it a piece of white felt. And um, I also, when I purchased the felt, I purchased a piece large enough that I could use to roll the puzzle up if I wanted to. So um, felt really is just all they use to make a puzzle roll out of. So if you've seen the puzzle rolls in shops um, where you do the puzzle on the felt and then you roll it up after you've done um, the cardboard at the back sticks to the felt. Um, and that's really all it is. Now, I did look for puzzle rolls on the internet, but I could not find one that was big enough for a 2000 piece section or a 4000 piece section, which is ultimately what I did end up doing. I, I did mix two of the bags at one stage. So I needed something specific that was going to allow me to do the puzzle and then put it away at the end of the day. So um, all I did was I purchased white felt from an online haberdashery and I bought it to measure um, checked it against the size of the puzzle and the sections and it worked a treat. I just used a, um, a, par a parcel tube to wrap it around and I put an elastic band on either end and it worked absolutely fine and it and allowed me to put the puzzle away at the end of the day. The board that I just mentioned as well, I could carry that around. It was just about wide enough it fit through the doors so I could put that away in a different room and cover it up and it was perfectly fine. Now another method is to perhaps use a board uh, like a piece of foam board. I think a lot of people use those. You can get those pretty easily from Amazon as far as I know and um, the good thing about those is you can potentially put them together and work on the puzzle. And then when you're done at the end of the day, you can stack them up and put it away. So, um, so yeah, so there's a few ways you can do it if you're limited for space and um, it's not impossible at all. And even mixing a couple of bags like I did, um, I managed it and I managed it without losing the pieces. Um, we won't mention the section where my cat potentially 
ate a couple of the pieces. That was all fixed now, so that's fine. But you know, you can you can you can do it. You can do it definitely. I would encourage if you want to do this puzzle and it is space or size or those kind of logistical questions that's putting you off, there's definitely ways around it. So that is how I did it. So my third question uh, that I will now answer was what were the easiest and what were the most difficult sections of the puzzle to do? Okay, so obviously each section is different and each one came with its own challenges. So <laughs> some were more difficult and some were easier. If I had to put them in an order from easiest to hardest, now then, let me look down at this because I can't remember my ordering here. Yes, yeah, so the order of difficulty from easiest to hardest were F, which is the section I've done in this video, followed by D, which is the bottom left section, which is kind of the opposite to the one I've done today, uh, followed by B, which was the top middle section, then E, which is the bottom middle section, and then C, which is top right, and A, which is top left. Now, on the whole, I found the orchestra sections of the puzzle, so the, the bottom half, on the whole, I found those a lot easier than the top sections. The reason being, uh, there was a lot less curtain <laughs> in the bottom sections, and in the top section, in the middle top wasn't too bad, it just had a little bit of the curtain at the top, and I, it was manageable, and by that point, I'd done a section of the puzzle already and I was kind of au fait with it all and everything. So um, that wasn't too bad at all, but the top left and the top right where the large bits of curtain at the side were by far the hardest. It's just with it being all one colour and taking up so much of the section of the puzzle, um, it was a bit of a shell shock, uh, which is the reason why I, I've put A as the hardest. I mean, A and C were probably equal difficulty, but because I did A right at the beginning, I just wasn't prepared for it. <laughs> I just was not prepared. And, uh, I, you know, I wasted time trying to do the curtain first and it just didn't really work. <laughs> so. So yes, the curtain sections were the hardest. Um, now, the reason the orchestra section in the, uh, the middle orchestra section, I put that as sort of medium difficulty. And the main reason for that is because you had large characters with blue suits on. So you've got Mickey standing there in the middle um, looking fabulous, but there, there was just all that blue in his suit and all the white on his gloves and everything and the black of his ears and things. And then you had the blue suit from the, the cow um, and from Stinky P and also Donald Duck. So it, there was just, again, it was big blocks of color that I was having to tackle. So that particular bit of orchestra was more difficult than the two on either side of it. But yeah, so in order from easiest to most difficult, F, D, B, E, C, and A. Um, and the, that sort of measures up as well with um, how long each section took me. So, you know, the easiest section took me the least time and the hardest section uh, took me the longest. Which brings me on to my next question uh, rather nicely. Question four, how long did it take me to complete? Now, a lot, lots and lots of people have asked me this and um, I'm going to have to start this question uh, the answer to this question by apologising, because at the very beginning, when I first did this puzzle, I, I didn't realise that people were going to be so interested in that. And uh, I was perhaps a bit daft of me, really, but I was also just so excited to get it started that I never really thought about keeping timing. So I was quite lax with my timings uh, for the first section and for the double section that I did after that. So unfortunately, it won't be... a an accurate figure, there may be an hour or two, <laughs> give or take. I know that's probably not what you want to hear, but I can tell you this much. The section that I completed today took me 17 hours and two minutes. So that was the shortest section. I beat my record, which was the bottom left section, section D, uh, that was 17 hours and 48 minutes. So I beat that time by quite a lot, 46 minutes. That's not bad at all. So um, 
that I was really, really pleased with. Um, in spite of, you know, my terrible sorting and <laughs> just not knowing where pieces went, um, it still, it just seemed to come together more quickly. So uh, that was good. Um, so yes, and as I just mentioned, section D, that took me 17 hours, 48 minutes. Section C took me 24 hours and 24 minutes. So they're the three sections that I measured um, more diligently. Section A took me around about 28 hours. And section B and E, they were a double section. Now, I'm a bit more hazy with the timings on that one, but I think the two sections together took me about 34 to 36 hours. And that is good, really, because if you think that it's two sections and you divide it between the two, that makes it around about 17 hours a section. So I suspect it, each section, if I'd have done them on their own, probably would have taken me closer to 18 or just over hours. I mean, the top middle section had a lot less red curtain in it, so that wouldn't have been as time consuming. And the bottom section, by the time I'd got to that point, I was really, I really had got to know the puzzle by that point, And I, I feel like I was kind of plodding along with it really, really well. So that's, those two sections took me around about 34 hours. So in total, adding all those together, rounded up, it took me 122 hours to complete this puzzle. Now, like I say, that's give or take an hour possibly to, but uh, I think that that's a good, I think that that's pretty accurate, 122 hours. Uh, again, I apologise that I can't be more accurate than that. I was, uh, I was a bit of a rookie at the beginning of all this, um, and I did not take accurate timings at the beginning, but I will from now on. <laughs> I promise. So 122 hours is how long it took me to complete this puzzle. Question five. Ah, right. I'm looking forward to answering this. What are my next large piece count puzzle projects? Right. Okay. I have a few that I really want to do and a few that I know that I will do for definite and a couple that I will highly likely do, but I um, need to buy them first. <laughs> so I'll start off um, with ones I would really like to tackle. Um, so on the, the slightly more modest end of the giant puzzle scale, at 6,000 pieces, I would really, really love to tackle the puzzle called Entering the Room. Um, which is by Educa. Uh, I just think that puzzle just looks really, really cool. I've never done an Educa puzzle, so uh, I would uh, really like to try one of their puzzles. Um, and another 6,000 piece one that I would like to do as well is called the Disney Gala, and that is also by Clementoni. Um, so those are two on the slightly lower end of the scale. Um, there's a number of large Ravensburger puzzles that I also like. So uh, I like the 9,000 piece Underwater Paradise. That's a really lovely one. And um, also the 18,000 piece at the Waterhole puzzle of theirs is also really lovely. Um, on a smaller scale, in terms of Ravensburger, they do a 5,000 piece one called Space Odyssey, which I think is really cool. I really do like space puzzles and I'm going to be doing more of those on this channel. So uh, yeah, look out for those. And uh, I, I don't laugh at me for this one, <laughs> but they also do a 5,000 piece Pokemon puzzle. <laughs> I'm a Pokemon fan. Um, I really like that one as well, but I don't know how easy a lot of these puzzles are going to be to get hold of. I think some of them uh, aren't that easy to get now but um they're ones that i like and would like to do my dream ravensburger large puzzle and this is another one that's difficult to get hold of unless you have a spare thousand pound or so to spend on it um one of my dream ones by ravensburger is the eighteen thousand piece star wars puzzle uh, I would love to give that a try. I'm a massive Star Wars fan. But as I say, I've only seen it on like eBay and people ask quite high amounts for it, which I just cannot afford right now. But maybe one day <coughs> I will 
figure out a way to get a hold of it or I'll get lucky or something. But uh, yes, that's that's one of my dream ones that'd be brilliant to do. Um, so one that I do fully intend to do, and we're talking really large here, um, and it is, um, I can get hold of it. I have seen it on Amazon and I have seen it for reasonable prices, although the price fluctuates wildly. So I'm going to have to wait till it's a good price again. But one I would really like to do is called Wildlife and it's by Educa and it's 33,600 pieces. So look out for that one because I I really would like to get that. It's it's on my wish list. It's up there with the dream puzzles. Um, um, and lastly, um, one that I know I'm definitely going to do and actually have already <laughs> is this one here. I'm going to try and lift it up. It's quite a heavy box. It's a 6,000 piece puzzle. It is by Clementoni and it is called the Venice Sunset. There it is. Gorgeous, gorgeous puzzle. Now, I was actually uh, sent this puzzle by um, Smith's Toys here in the UK, and I am so, so grateful to them for sending that to me to build. They want me to build it for them, and um, I'm really, really looking forward to doing it. They literally just started stocking this puzzle um, in their shops, and and they sent it to me to do, and I I'm, I'm, can't wait to start it. So I'm actually going to start this one very soon. Look out for it on my channel. It'll be coming up in perhaps sometime in November, I would think. Um, but yeah, so that is my next large piece count puzzle that I'll be doing. And that will be a challenge all on its own because even though it's 6,000 pieces, it's obviously it's not 13,000 pieces. It is not split into sections. It's not split into bags. It's just 6,000 pieces of one puzzle that I'm going to have to do as a whole. And I've that's more pieces than I've ever done in one go. Uh, so <laughs> that's going to come with its own challenges. Um, and I've had to figure out ways, you know, that I can do it in my relatively small flat. Um, but yeah, uh, having figured all that out, I can't wait to start that puzzle. So yeah, look out for that one. So they're my, uh, they're my large piece count puzzle projects. Um, that I have kind of floating around in my mind to do at some stage in the future. Uh, right, next question. Where can I get this puzzle and for how much? Right, well, a few people have asked me this and I can answer it to a certain extent. I'm in the UK and in my experience, this puzzle is quite easy to get hold of in the UK. Um, I bought mine from a website called Very, and it was, I think, £69.99, which I thought was a decent price for the size of the puzzle. It's an excellent quality puzzle. And um, I mean, I've enjoyed it every second of doing it. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually feel, you know, blessed and privileged that it is so easy to get hold of in the UK. I know you can also get it from Amazon, uh, the UK Amazon. And I also uh, know now that you can get it from Smith's Toys, which I just mentioned a second ago. They have just started stocking these large piece count puzzles, this one and the Venice puzzle included. So um, you can get it in the UK from Smith's Toys as well. And I think it might be just a touch cheaper than I got it for in there as well. But we are coming up to Christmas now. So uh, I guess prices will be competitive. Um, unfortunately, as far as getting it overseas goes, I don't know. I don't know how easy it is. It's possible you might be able to order it from Amazon UK, but I would imagine that comes with some fairly hefty delivery fees. So... Um, yeah, again, I can only apologize really. I don't have the information on that, but if you're in the UK, you're lucky. You can get it from Smith's, Amazon and Berry. Uh, so yeah, and it's around about 70 pound. Um, right. So that was the last question. I think I've pretty much covered everything now. If I have missed any important details or if there's anything you wanted to know that I have not covered in this outro, please do ask me, pop something in the comments and I will happily answer um, any questions you have about this puzzle. Now, don't forget, this is not the final video 
uh, relating to this puzzle, I have a couple of bonus videos planned for you, so please stay tuned for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of you who have subscribed to my channel and, and followed along with my journey on this and liked the videos because I just the support has really, really helped and it's really made the whole thing just really joyful and um, amazing. Uh, you know, all the questions you've asked and the interest you've shown in uh, in this puzzle and, and me building the puzzle, uh, it's been brilliant. So thank you so much for that. If you haven't subscribed and you have liked what you've seen and you want more of the same, then please do subscribe and please do as well. Let me know if there are any puzzles that you would like to see me do, uh, big or small. Um, let me know and I'll look into it because I'm sure there's probably thousands of puzzles out there that you'd like to see me do that I've not even heard of. So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Otherwise, all that's left for me to do is say thank you, take care, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.